Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Joren or Triplus as I like to make myself known online. And today I have another video for you which pretty much goes back to the roots of my uh, YouTube channel, at least the tech part of it, which is the Raspberry Pi. Um, as you can see in front of the camera, I have a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with 4 gigabytes of RAM, uh, an official power supply, and which is the main star of this video, let's say, is the Argon 1 M.2 case. Um, I'm quite excited, excited for this one actually, I've seen it around a few times um, but the fun thing about this is that it has an M.2 slot for which reason of course I bought a M.2 SSD um, as you can see it's a SATA SSD um, don't expect your NVMe one to work, you will need an SSD that has those like two little um, cutouts let's say, I'm not sure what to call them um, to install in this case to my understanding um, so yeah I would say let's get going because I have a feeling this may be one of the longer videos out there, um, especially since I'm unboxing multiple things. Uh, let's start with the Raspberry Pi 4. So it's my first Raspberry Pi 4 as well. I have a 3 and a 3B, uh, but yeah, there it is. So what, oh, well, you didn't see that. <laughs> so there it is. Uh, what changed in my understanding very quick, but probably all of you know that already, um, USB 3 ports, I think this is a gigabit um, uh, Ethernet connection, um, we have mini HDMI, um, I don't like that, this case has full HDMI, that's better, and USB-C power supply, of course you got your SD card slot still and your GPIO. And I have 4GB of RAM, which should be somewhere on this board. Um, uh, I cannot immediately find which chip would be the RAM. Um, but yeah, and of course it also has a stronger processor as, um, as before. So that's always nice, processing power. Uh, little manual, I guess. Uh, I read the manual, I guess that means uh, handle it with care, blah, blah, blah. Fine, let's put it down. I mostly know my way around the Raspberry Pi. Let's have a quick look at the official power supply as well. Again, USB-C. So be careful when you're trying to buy power supplies now um, between uh, Raspberry Pi 3s and Raspberry Pi 4s. It's USB-C or USB um, uh, type, um, well, it's micro um, USB for a traditional one. So this is USB-C. We will be using this. And then the star of the show, the Argon 1 M.2 case. We have some sticky stuff here to get through before we can open this. There we go. And there we go. So what do we have in here? I'm assuming this is a little manual. Yes, looks to be. So I will be using this one for sure because it's the first Argon case that I'm assembling. And then here it is, the Argon one, if I want, if it wants to. There we go. There we go. The Argon one M.2 case for a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, to my understanding, this is a magnetic cover for the GPIO later on, which I'm unable to remove. There we go. So this will be your GPIO uh, slots. No use for me there. Um, we will have a start button. Okay, it wasn't closed yet. <laughs> um, so apologies for that. So we'll have a star button. I'm not really going to use that one, but at least we will have the option. Um, this will be used for connecting your M.2 uh, to the actual Raspberry Pi in combination with this slot. And then we have some, some screws, um, some um, thermal pads and this is uh, I think rubber feet for the bottom of the case. 
We have a little fan over here, your heat sinks. Um, and then this, but I will have to read that. You also have an IR receiver, which you can buy a remote for separately, to my understanding. Maybe this works with every remote, I'm not sure. And then over here, you have this jumper. Um, it seems that 1 to 2 is the default and 2 to 3 is always on. So it's possible that... Um, I'm not sure if that is regarding... Let me quickly read through the manual if it is mentioned in there. Okay, so it is as I thought. It states here that for pin 1 to 2 you will need to press the power button to go on. For pin 2 to 3 it will always be on, no need to press the power button. In my use case, so what I will be using this, this is exactly what I want. So I'm going to change it. So let's pull this out and let's link up 2 and 3. So you can see now that 1 is not linked, 2 and 3 are linked. So that is what I will be doing as per these instructions over here. So let's get to the assembly, I would say. Um, I will uh, unbox, it's not much to unbox, uh, this once the time is there. Uh, so let's start with the extra shield. Um, these are your two HDMI ports, this is your AV port, um, and these are your two full-size HDMI out ports. So I have seen that this may require a bit of pressure. I don't think it wants to go much deeper and this also looks to be mostly touching. So let's leave it at that for now. So this is the, well, I'm going to open the instructions again. So push all the way in to the daughter board. Should look like this. I'm going to wait for now with the silicon pads because I first want to test if everything is working fine before sticking things to other things. Um, or, well, I can actually put them in between. So these are the pads. Um, as you may be able to see, there are some, um, if it wants to focus, there is some um, plastic covering in it, let's say. Um, for now, I'm just going to put these here. I'm aware it's not perfect. I'm not going to run the Raspberry for hours and hours this way. Uh, this is just for me to test if it works um, and if we will have any issues with the Raspberry because I haven't tested the Raspberry separately. As you just saw, it just uh, got unboxed. And if I would need to send it back for um, yeah, warranty because it isn't working, um, I do not want sticky residue on the um, GPU and, and, uh, and CPU and so on. Um, so that's what I say on the first one. So carefully connect Raspberry Pi GPO to power and cooling board. So okay, so now we have to turn it around and push it in. So the easy thing here is you just need to line up your GPIO ports. I'm not sure how easy it is to see that. But if you line those up, you can be quite sure that everything is lined up quite nicely. So, and as you can see, the back is starting to look um, professional, let's say, or finished is a better word. Um, here it states now to continue um, plugging in or like screwing in things. Um, I'm just going to do a few screws. Okay, so this should be mostly uh, secured. Again, temporarily, make sure that once you use it fully, um, everything is done the way it's supposed to. So now let's move on to our M.2 drive. There we go. Again, here it states it's not compatible with M.2 NVMe storage drives. So just go SATA or, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if anything else is fully compatible, um, but this one, I'm rather sure that it's compatible. So let's remove this little screw. Okay. 
Let's insert this. in here then we can push this down oh, and screw this in so now our m.2 drive is also secured and now it states basically that we need to Put everything in and then put our rubberized feet on the bottom and then plug in this so again temporarily let's put this on here and then we have this unit here which we can stick like this Well, I was expecting that <laughs> USB, 50% chance you never get it right. So we have that in and then it basically states to start plugging in your power supply, which should be over here. And then an HDMI cable in the most left slot apparently. So let's try doing that. Um, well, fun fact. And actually, let's first move to my computer and let's quickly flash an image because at this moment it obviously won't do anything. So let's select standard Raspberry Pi OS. Um, let's take this one and let's write. Okay, so now I've written the Raspberry Pi OS to my SD card. Good thing that I didn't close it up actually because, oh, I need to unplug this one first. Now I can still plug in the SD card. And again, I'm not going to close it up yet because I will want to remove the SD card later on. So let's close this up again. Ah easy way to recognize if it's upside down or not this is a little robot thing uh, and it needs to be upright so there we go the next step is to plug in an hdmi cable again as per the manual in the most left slot so let's do that then let's take our fancy new power supply as well Let's quickly undo the twisty tie. So I'm going to add power to it. I hear the fan spinning very faintly. That's something. Um, oh, okay, and we have um, an image. I, yeah, I see something moving, so that is good. Um, so that means that the Raspberry seems to be working. That's always a good thing. Uh, right now it is still just booting from the internal um, uh, from the internal SD card. Again, no issue for me at the moment. Um, yeah, let's see what we can do. Um, because we will need to do some comments. I have this very <laughs> funny key keyboard over here. Uh, let's plug in the wireless dongle here i hope it is still charged i honestly didn't think about this when preparing this video so here i'm going to skip updating software um, because i'm not going to use this os for a very long time uh, i'm not even going to restart to be honest if you want to keep using this os by all means go ahead but uh, you will see in a second i will be moving my os to the um, internal SSD, which is, uh, well, my preference, of course. So let's go to software. And then if you scroll down a bit, um, there we go. Here it shows you the command that you need to 
fill in comma there we go so if you put this in the terminal it will install the same software that we just used to write our image so yes i want to install this okay so for whatever reason it doesn't show up in the menu by default oh 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 easy <laughs> but if you write rp imager in uh, your console it seems to be working so let's check okay this is our ssd that we want that's good now let's choose our os again you can choose choose whatever one you want but i will be installing retropie and i hope this excites some people already because i'm actually going back to retropie uh, we want the raspberry pi 4 version and let's write it to this okay so it has finished um, doing the thing so let's shut down our raspberry pi well let's first click continue here so let's shut it down so we can remove the sd card in a bit okay before we get going i quickly want to show you one last thing so the argon case uh, comes with some scripts that will help you in managing the power button which for me is not that relevant but also in managing the fan speed which for me is not important but quite useful uh, so for that reason i'm quickly going to try to set that up um, as you can see they provide a link here um, to well to do just that so it is important to know that this may not work with all os's um, this will for sure work in the Raspbian or Raspberry Pi OS. Um, RetroPi, the OS that I will be using, is based on Raspberry Pi OS, so my assumption or hope is that this will in fact work. So let me execute the script now. So now we're installing this. Um, this is the standard script uh, provided by Argon. Again, if you don't know what the script is doing, please read it uh, i'm not responsible for this but i'm quite sure well, and i also heard the fun stop so that's good so let's go argon one uh, dash config this will remove existing i'm fine with that <clears throat> so i want to adjust the fan to temperature Okay, so I don't know, let's say like 30, let's go with intervals of this 33, 66, and then 100. So there we go. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for more content because I'm going to dive again into RetroPie. Uh, I have also Steam Link on the agenda and quite a few other fun things with this Raspberry Pi that we've just set up here. Um, I'm really excited for all of this. Hope you guys are too. Thanks for watching and I see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.